uh, you know, the purpose of my class really is to 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 try to uh, have us be better patients. You know, have us be better. No, not patients. Have us be better stewards of our health and, and understand better of how the body functions uh, and what are the components. And then that's why I think the booklets, even though they're going to go away, I think they are, they have been shown to be very helpful as an overview. Uh, uh, and, and a lot of people have, a lot of ex-students have been, you know, telling me how they can use those to study for exams for further down the line or, or even, you know, bring them, bring them to work and, and, and have them be as references, which is kind of cool. Um, but anyway, that's just, we, start, we were just talking a little bit about uh, the experience in the whole class. Hello, everybody. How are you guys all doing? Hello, pretty good. How's the material for you all? It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, you said? Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm really sorry. And, I, and on my end, too, what's been what's been kind of the tough stuff for you guys to catch? I think it's just the workload. I'm pretty behind, so I'm just trying to catch up. OK, but, um, it's just, you know, memorizing everything, you know, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, and make sure, you know, again, the test at the end is all open book. Okay. So it's it's a lot of it is about organization and there's a lot of new terms that do come out your way. Wait, um, wait. So if if the, the test is open book, is the regular quizzes open book? They're always open book. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that's why you can take it over and over again. Oh, I see. Okay. That's why I also, you know, use more the word questions versus quizzes. I'm really sorry if that wasn't clear. Yeah, yeah, that is all. I, you know, I mean, I, I, I can't really stand behind you and see if you're using a textbook or not. And so I figured uh, if I make the, all my exams open book, um, it helps you guys to learn how to organize material and use it as references, because honestly, <laughs> If you go and study how people retain information, a lot, and these are Harvard studies, a lot of the students, most of the students know material short term and then they forget it again after, after the test because we tend to cram as students. And so all my tests are open book. So I want you to be more focused on understanding the material than on, um, than on memorizing the material. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. And, and Connie, you know, if it, if it totally screwed you up that you didn't know it was open book, talk to me. OK, I, I don't want that. I, I didn't I didn't mean to have that misunderstanding there. I thought that was sort of clear. I'm sorry about that. Um, but also when we talk about that memorization versus not, I think it's always very important that I let me see. I can look at that. I can share screen again now. Um, that we make sure we all know and understand how the last test is set up. So if you go to, can you see my screen, anybody? Yes, yes, uh, I can see it. So I want you to, you know, be focused on going to the, to the test review, test three review, which is down here on the test three. But I also have it, I think, under the heart chapter, which is the first chapter, but we're not going to go there. Uh, but then under this review tab, you have a few things that I think are helpful. and You want to have those handy now. Number one, when it comes to the anatomy, the labeling terms, you have a full term list here again. You have that also in your handouts, which is all the terms that are on the test number three which is the term list number two. It's just the last term list. The first test doesn't have a term list. And so all these terms are the ones that are coming on the test. Again, you have that list next to you. On the test, you will only have to recognize uh, these terms from the models when I point at them and the videos. And so, you know, have all that handy and make yourself focus on Oh, shoot, that's not what I want to make yourself focused on um, 
understanding where those are versus on memorizing them and thinking you have to, you know, regurgitate them without knowing anything. These here, these videos here, I think you should start watching because they basically show you all the terms. That's allowed. Well, never mind. It just it just shows you all the terms, you know, on the models that I use on the test. And so it kind of goes rapidly, but it's great to review it like that. That's what a lot of students in the past has used. I also have this picture set here that I created that has all the models in picture format. And you can pretty much, you know, maybe it's a little hard to print those out because of the ink use. There's a lot of ink, but you can use them to sort of, you know, label the terms on, maybe put it on a, you know, download it as a PDF or something like that and just kind of visualize it. But that those are the models that are used on the on the test three. And then lastly, the first thing here is for all the material that is not the um, terms, not the labeling and coloring stuff, but all the other material from the booklets and the videos and the questions that are relevant for the test are listed here. So they're all bullet points. And so from the chapter of blood vessels, for example, all the things I want you to know for the test are right here. So in essence, you don't need the book for the test. If you understand all these things, you can use these sheets, it's four pages, and do the, the multiple choice and the true false part of the test um, right off of these sheets. And so as we go through the material, I want to make sure you have those pieces um, with you and, and you don't think you need to know everything that we talk about in the lessons for the test. I rather have us talk about it for a amount of stuff in the lessons and you kind of can kick back and check off on the list that, you know, review list and say like, oh, this is on the test. Okay, let me start that. And this is on the test, let me start that. And the rest, I want you to try to understand as much as possible um, um, and not try to think you have to know it all. And the reason why I do it that way is because it lets me get you a, bit or, a little more of the story sort of line of how does the body work uh, uh, and not just a superficial layer um, of everything, uh, which is kind of how I found this class originally, but it was very confusing to just like in the brain have a list of terms and that's the end of the story and you don't have more of a you know, more of how things work uh, together. And honestly, the brain is the hardest organ to study. So if you get confused on that and it's just like, holy cow, I understand a little piece and pieces, that's totally fine because that's, you know, that's the way we have to study the brain, for example, is by going through it over and over again and adding on a few more pieces every time. But that also means we are, it is a kind of an overwhelming thing to study. So if you're confused on that a little bit, that's just the, the way things are, unfortunately, for everybody who studies the brain, at least in the beginning. It's, it's really hard to study for, it's really hard for the brain to study the brain. That's just the way it goes. Um, so don't get you know, too frustrated about that. Just kind of try to go like, holy cow, this is really interesting stuff. That's you know, what I think, how I like to, to, to take this material in and how I like to present it. That also, you know, trying to take as much of the test anxiety away as possible by giving you clear information and giving you, giving you as, as clear as an outline as possible. Is that a little, is that helpful or is that like, never mind? That's really helpful. Good. Yeah, so um, then what I want to do secondarily, and again, if you have any questions, just interrupt me. And then we don't have too many, you know, blind pauses, quiet pauses here. But the second thing I want to just talk about is this week. Um, and and um, if we look at all the weeks, you always have this FYI, and I mentioned this once in a while. And these are integration sessions. And these are like, if you have a hard time with the quizzes, with the questionnaires, I pretty much go through all the questionnaires in these videos. Now, you don't have to watch this. That's why it's for your own information. But in case you feel like, hey, I really want a little more, 
it's just an order couple of class um, classes that I did in front of students with going through these questionnaires. Um, and, you know, so some of that is a little bit more background information and so forth. So depending on how much time you have and how interested you are, this might be, you know, fun to watch again. Then anyway, this week, we're going to look at the spinal cord. We have some questions here and we have a labeling here, color labeling. There's not that many terms on that. And then we also look at the special senses or basically the senses as a whole. Um, um, but most of the thing we talk about in there is uh, some general understanding of how pain, how touch, how temperature sensation works, but then mostly how the eye works, how the ear works, uh, how we taste and how we smell, and also the balancing that's part of the ear. Um, and so you have questions there, you have a little color and labeling, it's not that much on this part, but then we also have a visual acuity screening test. And so that thing is you have in your health kit. And if you don't, this should be a copy of the exercise here. And what I want to do with this, this is one of those sort of integration, you know, what's the relevance of learning this information, exercises kind of things. And what I want you to do with that, I want you to get a screening test of a visual acuity taken care of. If we, if we look at the eyeball and the vision, we should be able to see, wherever I wrote that down somewhere, you should be, we should be able to distinguish two distinct points separated by 1.5 millimeters, which is this many inches, at 20 feet. And that's what we call 2020 vision. So that's an acuity question. How well do we see? And we have a simple way to figure out, you know, more or less how well we see. And that's via a Snellen chart. And a Snellen chart is this letter chart that starts with big letters and ends up with very small letters. And this here that you have in your handout, or if not, you just print this one out, um, is one that is sort of a, a screening test chart because we can post that on the wall, stand six feet apart, and then close an eye and look at what can we see and how far down can we read it. And then depending on how far down we can read at six feet, not like here, you know, right now, it's like, wow, I got really good vision. Um, but at six feet, we can then figure out is our vision 2020 or is it, you know, less than 2020. And as a screening, we can then say, hey, maybe I should check it out with the doctor go to the ophthalmologist and have it be done, you know, professionally, which, you know, this is part of the ophthalmology exam, the eye exam. And then you write down these levels here that you have on your eye, take a picture of it, upload it on the canvas. And that's the exercise that I want you to do with that. Have a little reflection, you know, how did you see, how does it work for you? Um, um, and then if you have eyes, if you use glasses, then do it with glasses, without glasses, and kind of get an understanding of that, uh, uh, if you like. And so that's a little exercise that I want to do here, in addition to just the regular questions and labeling exercises that we have. Well, after the lecture, of course. All right, that's about it for this week. And then we, after that, we're going to move into respiratory, digestive, and nutrition. We have a little more health kit here where we follow our food intake for a few days, and then we finish up the semester very, very soon. So at this point, I want to make sure, you know, you start catching up. We can always accept the coloring labeling stuff a few days after the 17th. So, you know, Saturday 19th sort of, but the quiz, the questions, and the exam are Canvas-based, and the Canvas closes on the 17th at midnight. And so be aware of that. And I'll be keep mentioning that uh, as we, you know, meet on Zoom. But if you're coming, we're slowly coming to a close of the semester. And so um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm sure everybody's a little bit burned out with all the school stuff going on. I know I am. Um, um, but with that, is that clear what we're going to do this week? Yes. Good. Any questions? Can I chat with you after class? Absolutely. Yeah. And also, exactly. I want to mention, 
you know, this is a time, you know, reach out to me if you need help understanding uh, how we structure these last few weeks. Maybe you need a little guidance because you feel behind and so forth. Text me, reach out to me. Uh, best is via text, email. I'm a little sluggish sometimes, um, but we'll try to make this work so everybody can finish up the semester in a positive note and not feel completely overwhelmed in the process, but have it be a positive experience. Okay. So the best way would be to text you via phone, right? Yeah, yeah, just on my phone. Five, the, 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 my text number, the 510 387 2946. Correct. That's, okay. that's straight to me. I mean, I get overwhelmed sometimes because I have 100 students. And so feel free to, you know, give it a day and then text me again, be on my, be on my case. But that way I see it and I can respond fastest to it. Um, and email is a little bit more difficult sometimes. Awesome. Also, by the way, how's the new laptop going for you? Hey, it's better. <laughs> I actually <laughs> get stuff done and it's not like twiddling, twiddling thumbs because nothing is showing up. Yeah, your presentation seems a lot more relaxed and more like, okay, I got my stuff together now. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it, you know, you try to, right, do it, then if shit gets stolen and it's like <laughs> so many people are desperate, but there is a feeling of violation when this kind of stuff happens and it takes a few weeks to get back to it. So thanks for asking. Yeah. Don't worry about it, man. I'm glad you're back on top of it. No, no, it's Professor. Cool. Yes. Okay. I, I was actually wondering if I could ask you like what country you're from because of your accent. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. That's kind of interesting. I don't, <laughs> we don't really know much about you. <laughs> I'm from Switzerland. Oh, uh, uh, Switzerland okay. hat. Awesome. You know, yeah, see you right there. I, <laughs> I came here when I was early 20s. I went to Mossar school after I did a, an apprenticeship in insurance administration in Switzerland, which is kind of the pathway you do there a lot of times. Um, and then I did massage school a few years after that. I entered chiropractic school and did that. And then a few years after that, I started teaching. And I, well, parallel to the practice, I see patients now with COVID three days a week. Uh, I feel very fortunate. I've been able to practice on and work with, with a lot of professional athletes and learn really cool techniques that I'm very you know, unique in the area of doing muscle activation stuff. So I feel very, very grateful to be able to do both the teaching and then the practicing on, on real physical people. And hopefully that way bring the stuff closer to you than just being a theoretical you know, teacher. But that's where the accent is from. Cool. All right. Well, with that, we can close it out. And I can okay, bye guys. All of those questions. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Hi.